Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. This is the Mangina Dialogues. We at it again with your host, Nick Scopes. And the Gregolicious. You know how we do, cause you know we keeping it gangster and silly. Unplugged like a fool swung titty. About get jitty, cause you know we down to the nick and the gritty. And we make shit sound so damn pretty. Cause this unhinged comedy. And right now you're in the mix. So get ready, cause we about to get it poppin'. We ain't stopping. I'm educated, I'm filtered, unhinged. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Mangina Dialogues podcast. I am one of your hosts, Nick Scopes. And I'm Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> That's Greg Alperin. It's the same age as Tony Soprano. Um, we got to give it up for our guest today. He is a stand-up comedian. He is a world-renowned Joe Rogan impersonator. And he loves women's tie-dye. <laughs> give it up for Jeremiah Watkins. What's up? Yeah, man? I'm wearing a woman's shirt today. How you doing? <laughs> That's a pizza I'm wearing all hut. black. So. Is it, what does it say Dude, on it? Dude, okay. I have, to, I have to give a shout out to this clothing company. It's a Phil Collins shirt. <laughs> wow. With a Pizza Hut look. Shout out to High Spirit Clothing. I mean, they sent this to me and it's one of my new favorite shirts. I'm already a Phil Collins fan. I was already a Pizza Hut fan. They found, they found their, their niche with me. So- what is the significance of the Pizza Hut roof on the Phil Collins? I don't understand. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> you wouldn't get it, dude. Dude, you don't get me, bro. <laughs> it's, a right. it's a generational thing. Generational gap, dude. <laughs> Listen, I love Phil Collins. Like, I love, dude. I love Phil Collins. I, uh, Genesis, don't even oh, get yeah. me started. I just love that. It, I mean, for those that aren't watching and just listening, it's a tie dye shirt with the Pizza Hut roof, <laughs> and it just says Phil Collins underneath it. I just want to break it down. It looks, it's hilarious. I thought it was a Pizza Hut shirt. I just saw the red part, and I was like, oh, it's a Pizza Hut shirt. It's tie dye. It's pretty dope. I'll tell you a funny Phil Collins story. I went with my parents to see Phil Collins on the No Jacket Re Required Tour. Okay, like, I don't even know, 1987 or something. <laughs> and I, my parents bought me these tickets. I was in high school. And people behind us were like just blazing pot the whole entire time right and my are dad you a cop by, are you a cop by the way they're blazing pot <laughs> no god no <laughs> they're getting surprised Greg awesome. Diddle. <laughs> they, were, they were smoking some of that marijuana he's just older now he lives and, in the suburbs it's uh, changed he used to follow the grateful dead so he's yeah, no stranger okay Anyways. pay respect i pay respect i'm sorry i just, I just want to let you know i can see it <laughs> he's a square now before anyway go he, ahead Greg. he used to be a rhombus anyway yeah. continue <laughs> Nick got the isosceles mask. triangle um so my dad turns to these these like four kids behind us and goes do you guys have any cocaine because it would be much better <laughs> if you would do some cocaine instead of smoking all that pot your dad said <laughs> yeah and i was like oh fucking hey come on man those guys probably go to my high school <laughs> That's awesome. And the answer was they did, says, and they shared it with my dad. Anytime, oh, they shared it with your dad? <laughs> no. Oh, anytime uh, somebody says pots, like in the plural, they're yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Are you smoking pots? How many, how many pots do you smoke a day? <laughs> how, many, how many plants? How many potted plants are we talking? Huh? <laughs> Let's yeah. this. What are they? I thought you were going to go in a different direction greg because i thought that you were you know the the famous phil collins story where uh he, the him witnessing a murder right. and stuff like that okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um so i thought you were gonna say i was the guy that murdered that guy out on the open water and he saw me that night at the <laughs> concert talking, and he called me out it's talked about me that song's about me <laughs> yeah i think that that rumor has gone around about everybody yeah. <laughs> so how did how are you such a big Phil Collins fan? I just I just like that era of music, and uh, there's like uh, like 
I like Peter Gabriel. I like uh, Genesis. I like Oingo Boingo, all that era of music. Um, you know, those guys are kind of a crew that loosely ran together and right. stuff and had different amalgamations of bands and stuff. So if you kind of like one, you kind of investigate like, oh, I like this. Then you kind of go down that rabbit hole and you're like, oh, then I like this and this and this. Yeah. So I grew up listening to a lot of different kinds of music, oldies music, uh, which um, and then more like classic rock and stuff yep. like that. And then it went more into alternative rock and rap and pop and all that stuff. So I'm, I like all genres except country. I hate country. Hmm. Dude. You and Nick. Yes. You and Nick both. When people ask me about music I like, I don't even go into like what I like. I go everything, you name it, just can't do country music. Yeah, I'm super eclectic as far as like what I like, but I can't do the... Same. She messed me up again. <laughs> I'm like, dude, stop. Like the big up trucks on broke. All, the all my that friends. Joke. <laughs> a good voice. And uh, at a That's Phil Collins good, concert, I took a big fat toe. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked a lot of pots that night. <laughs> but that's weird though because you know i mean i'm not a big cocaine country. was in the air tonight <laughs> <laughs> i'm My not a big told the guy guy. To do coke. <laughs> but i mean so much of classic rock there, there's very close ties to country right so i imagine like you, you're not even at all interested like don't like like johnny cash willie nelson any of the classic country guys you, there's there's always you know rules that are yeah there's stuff that you are is undeniable when it when it reaches a level it's like dude yeah johnny cash it's like that transcends what the new kind of pop country is right you know what i mean like some of that classic stuff you forget it it's garbage yeah but um i mean there's there's like different stuff within country and stuff that i can appreciate like i can appreciate stuff that I don't necessarily like, if that makes sense. Yep. Like I can listen to I it and I'd be too, like, yeah. I'd be like, okay, I don't personally like this, but I understand why this is a hit or I understand why this has a huge following or whatever. It's not me, but I get it. Yeah. How dude, many Taylor a lot Swift of... albums do you have? What's that? How many Taylor Swift albums do you have? <laughs> dude, all of them. <laughs> I'm a Swifty. All seven or eight of them. <laughs> I knew it. Once we saw the tie dye, I was like, this guy's a Swifty. Yeah, yeah. No On the back, it's I actually uh, I have a Taylor Swift <laughs> tramp stamp, so I'll show it to you maybe at the end of the podcast. We'll see. Nick, I think those two. Dude, the thing, the thing about country music too is that, like you said, you can respect. Like, I think some of the women country singers are some of the best singers out there. Dolly Parton's Jolene, pretty good. It's pretty it's great. Bad. It's a but great like, song. It's a it great is. song. But that's like just what you said. Like, there's certain. Like they're great singers. I just can't like get into the, I, I was telling my friend, all my friends pretty much are in a country and I was telling them they're like, I was like, yeah, the lyrics are kind of whatever too. And they were like, yeah, but you listen to rap music. And I go, yeah, you're right. Some of those lyrics are the worst. Well, yeah. But. There's a lot of garbage <laughs> rap lyrics, but like, but that there's a good beat, beat behind though, it. That beat. Exactly. But I, I mean, there's hillbillies and, and hick people out there who like that ding, 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 ding. They're like, oh, this is my jam, <laughs> so I went, that's, that's how they look at us, I guess. I, I went to, at the, at the, uh, to the Troubadour one night to see this bluegrass band called uh, Green Sky Bluegrass or something like that. And I went with a friend who was like, oh, come check out this band with me. They're really great. They play all these like dead covers on in bluegrass. I'm like, all right, I'll go check them out. And I have to tell you, like, after the first five minutes, I wanted to stab my eyes out. Like it was the same thing mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And I'm like, ha- like, what is going on in this room that I just flat out don't understand? It's a different scene. It's just yeah. like, but you know what I like to do when I'm put in that predicament, when I'm clearly in a space that I'm not comfortable in, I like to commit to it <laughs> and just soak it all in and just freaking go for it because otherwise you're going to be miserable if you don't give yourself over to it so i'm like oh you know what i'm just gonna try to have the best time possible tonight let me try to fake it till i make it you know what i mean i've been to some concerts and stuff where i'm like this music is awful but you know what everybody else is having a good time i'm not gonna be the 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 sour kid in the corner who's just like uh yeah, you know what? It's totally true. I went, I went to see Phil Lesh and Friends mm-hmm. at the Hollywood Bowl on this tour that they, he did with Willie Nelson, right? And I, I like Willie Nelson a lot. 
So I was like super psyched to go see Phil Lesh and then Willie Nelson or whatever. But there was like five other country bands on the opening bill of this this show. It's called like the Outlaw Music Fest or something. And I never heard of any of them. And I mean, like I got there early. I'm drinking like wine coolers. And by the time like the second band came on, I was fully committed to that country twang, like rock and roll lifestyle. And it was pretty fun. But like the next day, someone could have been like, what bands do you see? I'm like, no fucking clue. Like no idea. No idea. Could have been the biggest country band in the world. I had no idea what who they were, but it was fun for like five hours. Yeah. Why not? The closest I ever got to a country concert was a few years back. I went to a gay bar in New York City called Flaming Saddles where they're all dressed as cowboys. Anyways, so Jeremiah. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, kind of my cheers situation that I have going there. They, I walk in, everybody turns their head, and they, hey, Nick's here, that's cool. You're the, guy, you're the guy from the glory hole. I'm like, that's me, dude, that's me. Just raise my hand. Gonna be one of those. <laughs> dude, so Jeremiah, what's going on there in California? What's going on? Like, with are you able to do what's shows? not going on here, man? The scene is alive <laughs> and popping, dude. I've been doing six shows a week every night, just balls of the wall, secret basement shows, secret factory shows, secret <laughs> parking lot shows. They're all a secret because they don't exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, it's not, you know, I was just in New York for, uh, uh, a week, a couple of weeks ago. And I felt alive again as a comic because I've been able to go out on the road a little bit on the weekends here and there, but, uh, not that often, not as much as I was because, uh, you know, a lot of places are still shut down or whatever, and they're not really doing shows, but New York really figured it out. And LA, we still got to get our stuff together. There's just like, you guys hunkered down and you figured out quickly, like we got to make this happen. Otherwise, there's no shows in LA. I think we just kind of waited around a little bit too long and there's shows that are available to do out here, but they're way, way sparse than New York. Yeah. Like yeah, I was able to get up multiple times throughout the week in New York and it felt amazing. I did a warehouse show. I did a couple of rooftop shows, right? Outside shows. It was great. Did you do any of the park shows in central park? I didn't actually get to do a park show. I did some of the outside ones uh, through uh, Stand Up New York and uh, The Stand had their little patio area yep. Yep. that I did shows on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I didn't get to do a park show while I was there. That's too bad. We, we promote shows with Stand Up New York. In oh, cool. From you. Nick's done a few of the park shows. He did one last on the Friday. day of Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. He had the, uh, the luxury of opening the park show at 12.45 p.m., you gotta love it, dude. To an enthusiastic audience of about 30 people, which was pretty good. Now, Nick, what's your energy level when you went out there and did it? Like, are you a rally the troops kind of guy, or are you like, I'm gonna give you what I'm gonna give you? No, I, I, I fake energy pretty well. I could push through. I can tell, dude. You're freaking uh... ecstatic right now. <laughs> You're bouncing off the walls, dude. You are convincing, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I mean, right now I'm chilling, but I, uh, he just took an it, edible when it's time to like go. Yeah. I could fake that. I, my, my day job is I'm a personal trainer. So I gotta, I have to be positive and fake enthusiasm at all points. Okay. <laughs> so, You're a personal trainer. What is the yeah. best exercise? This is where I gain weight. I'll tell you the two places where I gain weight the fastest, I my chest wait. And yeah. then my the 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 sides, the love handles, and and lower Same, belly area. Actually. This Same. is where I gain weight, right here, and then the tire area, as they call it, for you personal trainers. <laughs> Can I answer for Nick? Mm -hmm. Or I'll tell you how I think Nick is going to answer. Okay. Nick is going to answer in it's your diet, and you have to lift weights and ease up on the cardio. Nick, Nick, <laughs> right? Okay, right. now I would like the answer from the freaking personal trainer. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. So, real quick backstory: Greg was my client. That's how we met and started yeah. doing this two years ago. <laughs> Greg this didn't listen to a seductive. fucking thing I said, um, but it's not true. No, it's true. So, Greg listens to nothing. No one but himself. 
and in every facet of life. So, which is fine. He's a successful guy. So great. Anyways, spot reduction. It's tough. That's a tough one because it's, they've done multiple studies and they say it really can't be done. It's just people store fat different places and that's just what it is. It's like, like my chest, for example, like you said, chest is the same way. My chest, especially I've been, I've weighed 270 and I've weighed 170. My chest is always there. It does. It never right. disappears. He has an amazing yeah. set of tits. It's just like the way I'm built. My ass too never goes away. Which it's just there. I actually have pretty tight pecs, but nice. it will, but it will be one of those things where if I gain five pounds, it starts to look a little bit like, mm, it goes past the point of looking good to like, oh, a little flabby. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with some chest flies and like people think doing sit-ups is going to burn like, like, you know, spot reduce fat. And that's not really how it works. I mean, you just need to lose body fat all over. I used to think that too. Like, oh, I just need like get my shoulders bigger and whatever. But then like you get leaner and you look bigger. So it's like weird. Huh. You know what I mean? You yeah, get yeah, lean, yeah. like your, your muscles there. It's there. Everyone's got muscle. You'd be, you'd be able to walk if you didn't fucking have muscles. Nick, but. Nick, the only personal trainer I've ever had, and I've gone through a lot that actually got pissed at me because I lost weight. Let me, let me, let me rebuttal here. I'm ready to fucking Uh-oh. go, dude. Girl, let me take that <laughs> scrunchie off real quick. <laughs> I have no hair, but it's okay. Um, so Greg came in, we did like, it's called an in body. So you like, it's to test your body fat, right? It's very, very accurate. And he came in, he weighed whatever he weighed. I don't even know. And then he came in again and we did it. Now it tells you, it gives you a full breakdown. How much water is in your body? A rough estimate of your, your basal metabolic rate, which just means calories. You burn at rest, muscle mass, body fat, everything. It really in depth. And he lost 10 pounds. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He lost 10 pounds. And then I started looking at the breakdown and he lost nine pounds of muscle and one pound of fat. I was like, this ain't really, I mean, it's good, but also not good. (laughs) What what were you doing? I'm just going by the math, man. Greg just like doesn't eat and then wears a sauna suit and runs for an hour and like <laughs> he boxes. He is a good boxer. Just sweating everything out. Just oh, dude. There's while times eating like, cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, he like doesn't eat. It's just like he lost all the muscle. I said, yeah, but I want to get too big. And that's my favorite thing. I'm not just making fun of you, Greg. Yes, he is. I train primarily middle-aged people, men, women, 40, 50, 60, even older. They're like, yeah, I don't want to get too big. I'm like, yeah, you're fucking middle. What do you think's going to happen? Like, you really think you're that genetically inclined to gain all this muscle? You don't want to get too big? That's not what, what I said. What the fuck are you talking That's about? not what I said. I never no, said I don't want to Everyone, get everyone. I never oh, said just, that. I would never it's say everybody. that. It's everybody. It's <laughs> everybody. I've said, says dude, that. I've, said, I've said that at a gym before. I've literally said that exact same thing. I'm like, I just want to get a little bit more tone. I don't want to get too big. If like you I, trained, like I'm gonna like be. If, if you went hard in the gym, like bench squat, deadlift, did like some bodybuilding accessories and shit after, like, you know, you're not gonna blow up. Like, there's people that are genetically inclined, and I've seen it. Some guys that are just freaks and just you know don't touch a weight for a while, then they just blow up immediately. But like, that's so rare, you know. Yeah. Like, all, it's so rare. That's how I get though with my chest when I start lifting weights. It freaking goes, <laughs> and I'm like, no, like let it, like let it spread out on these thin arms and stuff like that. It just goes, <laughs> and again, it's just like the way people. Everyone has like different muscle. Their muscles look different. Everyone has different muscle insertions. Like I, for example, I have a buddy, his best friend of mine, powerlifter, strong as shit like didn't squat for two years this is true didn't squat for two years like i think i'm gonna start lifting again and got under the bar and squatted 400 after not doing anything for two years okay i competed in bodybuilding i got shredded whatever we both got shredded at one point my muscles looked bigger like i looked stronger but he had me beat (laughs) by a long shot Mm -hmm. in strength it's just the way people are designed the way they're built it's just how it goes it's weird but no one likes to hear that answer, but so for, for example, if you were a client that was like, I just need to lose this and this, do you have anything for that? I would just go, uh-huh. I got it. I got the program for you. <laughs> I would just smile and be like, just take me on. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. I went to I went to a seminar once, and the guy goes, "If they come to you with that, and they're like, hey, like I need to lose this, this, and this, just say, yeah, I got the program, because then they're going to go to another trainer who probably doesn't know what the hell he's doing. They're going to just go find someone else who says sure. yes. You know what I mean? So you just don't want to lose business. So that's how it goes. I the just harsh rant, reality, bro. folks. <laughs> I think I think your you would... your gross body's not getting better, <laughs> no matter what. You and Carrot Top can go on the tour. Like, Carrot Top's got the shoulders, and you can have the chest. Like, that would be a hell of a double bill. And he's a hell of a poster. Hell of a poster. But speaking of jacked guys, your Joe Rogan impersonation on Kill Tony, that was great. I loved every second of it. (laughs) You came out with the fucking Jack Link's bag that he just put elk. (laughs) He just wrote elk <laughs> that got me that was the that fucking killed me so nick's a sucker you, for good beef jerky jokes that was so funny oh that was God. a fun night dude it's one of my uh i gotta say it's one of my favorite on stage moments like uh in all of comedy just because it was it was a uh it was an anniversary episode of the show and then he obviously doesn't come by to be a guest on the show very often. And uh, yeah. what uh, what opportunity are you going to get like that where yeah. you get to do an impression for the guy? I mean, there's yeah. only there's only you know it reached sketch show level like SNL and Mad TV when they do that for the celebrity they're impersonating. Yeah, that's that's what that was like for me. I was like, oh, this is this is the best. Which big stakes too because i'm friends with joe but uh had no idea how he was going to take it or if he's going to be a, a good sport about it and luckily he was i think he was i think he still likes me we'll see <laughs> have you invited <laughs> yeah. to texas yet no i haven't gotten that invite so it could have something to do with the impression who knows <laughs> <laughs> i can't see him like being upset by no the, like, he was like, a great sport about it there's yeah. no shot that you i mean I don't know what you could even do to offend Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't even know. I have no idea. It doesn't yeah. even, he just Maybe you should try. It would be fun for you to try, you know, because he calls in all the time. Yeah, totally. We talk to him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what a life we have, you know, guys. So let's, let's actually talk about some comedy. You, you grew up in Kansas City. Or yes, sir. Around, around Kansas City. And uh, which, which state was that? <laughs> That was on the Kansas side. I know you got to You got to clarify. Got People to. get real upset if you claim to be Kansas City and you're on the Kansas side. I am from Kansas City, and I'm is that on like the Kansas old, side. the old like East West rap wars, like which Kansas a little City, bit. But... I mean, people from Kansas City, Missouri, like disregard Kansas City, Kansas altogether because Kansas City, Missouri does have the sports teams yep. and they have like the plaza and stuff like that. So there's more nightlife and stuff like that on the Missouri side. So they're like, yeah, we have everything. So you can't claim us. And we're like, well, we're Kansas proper city. <laughs> so we're going to claim it. I, yeah, I got, I accidentally said that I was during uh, the special recording. I accidentally said that I was in Kansas and I had, an audience member blow up at me well, we're in Missouri. and it became one of the the tracks on the album and in the special because everybody that's literally everybody from that area they get really upset if you say you know that you're from one area or that you're in one part of kansas when you're actually in missouri or whatever like they get real upset about it this hometown pride i guess yeah right so how did how'd you get started doing stand-up Actually out in LA, I I moved to LA, like I was doing improv back in Kansas city. And then I moved out to LA and that's when I was doing improv and stand up at the same time. Then eventually just started doing stand up full time. Right. uh, Once I was in LA. Do you do improv anymore? I don't, I do. I riff and I do a lot of crowd work and I improvise like as a stand up comedian, but I don't do it with a team anymore or anything like that. How long have you been doing stand up? Where did you start? back in 2010 is when i started that's so, like 10 years. That's... so just over 10 yeah just hit over 10 and a half years yeah um how long did it take you to get um i don't want to say good but like to really develop an act because your act like your your act is is obviously it's stand up it's it's it, it's it's every, I mean, it's energy, it's personality. There's so much to your act, different level, you know, things you do in your act that, that 
seems that that's a, a lengthy process to work all that stuff out to actually have a polished act. It is because uh, you have to, I had to rather get good at both. I've always had improv as like a skill set where basically if my material was bombing when I was starting out the first few years, I could switch over to the riff side of things and yeah. save my sets. I would dig myself out of countless sets when my material wasn't up to par with the audience. So it took me years to get it to where they're more on the same level rather than when I start out, my improv skills were way up here and my stand up material was way down here. Right. So it's like, you know, you try to find an equilibrium over the years. So it took a while. It was a lot of rinse and repeat and bombing and listening to sets and figuring out why things weren't working on the material side of things. Because uh, I would save a lot of sets, just a lot of comics, you can save sets if you are just present. If right. you acknowledge, you, uh, you see so many comics who just barrel through and plow through a set where they're tanking. They're just doing freaking horrible. Right. They never acknowledge that they're not connecting with the audience. Yeah. And, and you can go the other way. I've bombed because I overconnected with the audience. I'm so present that I'm like, oh, you guys didn't like that joke? Oh, okay, let me try this joke. You know, you're, you're acknowledging every little yeah. thing in the room. So you, you end up finding a balance where you're like, okay, my material is good. My riffing is good. I can go either one. And that's like what this special is. It's, it's, it's a blended crowd work and riffing and improv and uh, a lot of stand-up material that I've been doing for years and years. And I'm excited for people to listen and, or, or watch because I really online only release like crowd work stuff because yeah. I don't want to burn material. Right. Yeah. There's My not material a lot of, is like very precious to me. Yeah. There's not a lot. You definitely can't find a lot of stuff of, of yours like material wise online. That's for sure. Yeah. So I'm excited for people to actually on the flip side of things, see material for myself. Yeah. It, it was, I mean, I enjoyed it. I, it was, I thought it was fun seeing your mom come out and <laughs> like, that was fun. You don't see that a lot. <laughs> No, that, I mean, that's what makes the special a special. It's not filmed in a, in a theater where it's like this super fancy budget or production. You know, I, it, it's self-produced and I paired up with Comedy Dynamics after I already shot and edited it with my buddy Gage T Arena. Right. Uh, it's one of those things where it's a special because of the environment and what was captured on that specific night. It makes it like, like I knew – my family, the way they were sat like in the front rows on both sides of me and my eye lines, that's yep. never going to happen again in a show because A, I won't allow that to happen again. Like I already warned the staff that my family was coming and the comedy gods were like, no, we're going to seat them here tonight <laughs> anyway, regardless. Right. And it was one of those things where I rolled with it and made, that's like the theme of the show out of it. It's called Family Reunion because sure. I, it was a forced family reunion <laughs> at my stand-up show yeah yeah and were there i think you made mention in in um in the special that the people showed up who you hadn't seen since like high school or something i started doing crowd work with a, a handful of people right while i'm doing the crowd work i'm like frick 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 no 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 i know <laughs> this person i can't <laughs> I can't ask certain questions now. And I even acknowledge a couple of times. I'm like, I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Okay. Another person I know over here. Okay, great. Great guys. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. But what did you expect if you're going to do this show in your hometown with your hometown peeps? Like, what do you, you had to expect that's going to happen. Like guys who are going to be like, Hey, do you hear he's coming to do his conduct uh, comedy? You know, I don't you like know, that. It's a, re him. it's a real ego check, bro. It's a real <laughs> ego check. It's just people that you, you know, which I'm grateful that they came, but like, you're like, there's going to be all these strangers right. that are going to be at the shows and stuff like that in my hometown. It's like, no, it makes more sense that it's that there would be more people that I know. Right. But what was, I think more alarming to me is because I had family surrounding me, I'm looking for any kind of lifelines that aren't people that I know. And right. then when I throw the raft out there to see if I can get anything. And I know those people too. That's when you feel blindsided when you're like, I, I'm, I'm surrounded right now. I'm literally surrounded. So it's a different kind of performance. And it's a, you know, I do the way I do that hour that I did in the special is different than any other hour that I would do on the road because the conditions are so different. So that's what makes it special to me. And I was, I was like, I captured that 
essence where it's like, I won't be able to do a show like that again. So I want people to see it in that, in that lens through my eyes, you know? Yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you about that. Like, it, it seems like that's a, that is a true one-off, you know, doing a show like that. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. The, like it's it literally now that that's happened, it will literally never happen again. <laughs> so that's what I'm excited about. Like to show people is I'm like, this won't happen again. Like literally ever in my lifetime. And like, and honestly, you know, as we get older and stuff like that, like our, our parents and family members, like they don't all come out yeah. to shows like that. Right. Like that's a rare case also where they all chose the same show. I tried to stagger them right. to different <laughs> shows and they're like, no, <laughs> we're all yeah, fri fri <laughs> Friday, Friday, Friday early. Yeah. <laughs> That's, we'll do that one so what were you more <laughs> nervous well i don't maybe you don't get nervous i'm sure like most people you probably do get some level of nerves was there more anxiety going into that show before you hit stage or once you got onto the stage and saw what you were surrounded by there's way more anxiety leading up to those kind of shows where family where you know that people who know you are in the audience Yep. There's always way more anxiety linked with that. I, I, oh, Nick, God. I'm sure like, you know, anytime somebody like is like, hey, can I come to your show? Put me on your guest list. You're already like, yes, but ugh. at the oh, same time, dude. you we would rather perform for strangers than people that we know because the bar is so different. And also people from your past, like it's mentioned in the special that I performed in front of, they have an idea of you from 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years ago. Right. So you're battling that. It's a much harder audience than somebody who's just like, you're presenting a package of who you are currently to an audience member who's never met you before. So that's way easier because they have no preconceived notions about you. They may know you from a podcast or like a TV appearance, but that's it. So they have a sense, but like, it's not like, oh, I can't believe he's saying this. <laughs> I, I knew him when, I knew that's, him when. Uh... I yeah. knew him when is really hard to perform in front of. Right. When I had like clients, if I have clients come to shows, never asked them. They've like heard like, heard you stand up. We want to come see you. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my, I mean, don't get me wrong. My, my act is not so wild and dirty that they'd be like, Oh, what the fuck? But like still, me it's neither, a, but it's I just, talk, I, I just talk about sex stuff and I yeah. talk about personal stuff and, and family stuff. And that's, that's Same. weird for them too, because, you know, I'm talking about my family and some of the bits in the special and they're there. So it's kind of like, and you know, my mom heckles a couple times throughout the special. <laughs> she's an act, she's an active audience member and I have to deal with that. And that's another thing where I'm like, I want, I want this to be in the special. Right. What, what special are you going to see where you, where the mom of the comedian is heckling them during this? <laughs> so good it actually dude. came up once before recently we had preacher lawson on yeah who, who just had he his special i guess also comic dynamics was re-released or something because it's been out on bet and right. there's a point in his his special where he says something and his mom like yells out from the stands that's not true oh my goodness <laughs> He's like, like, I what? know, I'm trying to entertain these people. <laughs> now he got an argument with his mom. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it was funny. That's great. It. All right. Well, me and Preacher. Me and Preacher okay. are the only two. Did Preacher bring his mom on stage? No, he didn't. Okay, he didn't. then don't come at me with that. <laughs> don't come at me with that, Greg, saying I'm just, just like every other great I, comedian like I, Preacher. I think you guys have the I same abs. Yeah, he's just, he's so good. Um yeah, but it was, it was that I think that was like super cool, you know, like fun. You know, you're in your town, you know, your mom's, you know, giving you shit and then she's up on stage. And did she, did you know, like, were you, was that a plan? Like, did you plan to do that or was that totally spontaneous? And you're like, all right, this is the time I got to bring my mom up and embarrass her. It was, it was spontaneous. I had thought that in the back of my mind, I was like, I was like, if she, it was one of those things where like, I was like, if she says something that trigger, like if she's saying stuff and like enough where I'm like, I can include her in the show, this yeah. might happen. Right. But it was pretty spontaneous. I was like, I even said it. Like, I'm like, I might regret this. Uh, <laughs> let's get my mom up here. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I mean, you once in a lifetime opportunity, you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't I couldn't imagine like looking out of the audience and just seeing people from like high school and shit. 
It's hard. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a different, it's, it's a different, um, it's like being an animal back into a corner. You're like, I got to do the show. I got to perform. Yeah. It's oh, a, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a, a slightly more manic energy at times, but l- luckily what I, what I like about how it turned out is I'm very comfortable, like being uncomfortable. Like I, I'm comfortable being put in weird, like I'm a late night comic at the comedy store and I've had to deal with the most can't, insane audience members. Can't even imagine, dude. That has to be. So un- I'm already used to yeah. being put in weird predicaments and that kind of training when I went back home, I'm like, okay, this is what we trained for. Like, let's go. Like, let's do this. This is a this is an odd circumstance and I'm going to make the most out of it and ended up making a special out of it. So right. yeah, I was stoked. So is that your, is, are those your normal slots at, at the store or the late night spot? Like you have to, what, after yeah. like, one, like one o'clock and on and all that? Yeah. Stuff? If I, uh, an earlier spot for me would be closer to like um, a midnight or something right. like that. Uh, if I'm creeping towards the midnight hour, then that's like, oh, I'm getting up early tonight, you know? Because the lineups are so stacked there oh, sure. yeah. where it's yeah. like, if you're even in getting closer to midnight, you're on a good trajectory and on a good pace to be like kind of leveling up. Right. Uh, and people keep asking me, they're like, are you moving to Texas? All this stuff. And I'm, dude, I'm, I'm riding it out in LA because I, there's a bunch of people that are, are leaving and I'm like, maybe it's a chance for the guys like me who are trying to be on the come up to get a little bit better slots around town and stuff like that and make more impressions on different audiences because maybe it'll be given a different opportunity since there's less. Yeah. 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 But, but don't you think like everyone's talking, right? Rogan left Joey Diaz is in New Jersey, whatever. Like, don't you think besides Joey Diaz, I feel like, don't you think once like LA opens up, like let's, this has been a long year and it's, this virus is not going to go on forever, but it's going to be around for a while. Like once LA opens up, don't you think those guys are just going to come right back? I think so. I think, I, I think they will after a while. I think they're all successful enough now where they right. can afford to have two homes where right. they'll be in and out. I think a little bit more than what people think right now, like, Oh, Rogan moved to, to Texas. It's like, he's a successful enough guy. He can have multiple homes. That's like, what I you know what thinking. I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like it's not out of the question. Like he's, he's done well for himself as, as a comedian and, and a host and, you know, announcer, like he's, he's doing all right. Like he, if he wants to, he can be, you know, I don't know what it's called. Like when you're not by coastal is LA, New York, but whenever you're in a couple cities, I don't know what you call that. You could easily be in Texas and LA native easily. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like people were talking about, you know, Rogan going to Texas, like, this is it, dude. He's never coming back to LA. They're leaving. I'm Goodbye, like, no. yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like, I, I dude, there's no shot. There's it's no shot. Guy. He just, then nah, I fuck the comedy store. And then that's a, he, I can't see him doing that. Nah. You know what I mean, what, uh, ha, do you work the comedy store the most or what other, where else are you around town? Yeah. The comedy store is my home club for sure. Uh, then I would say the improv, the laugh factor I rarely perform at, but I'll do occasionally. Yeah. And then it's just like alternative rooms, like around the scene. How often, like, how often do you get up at the store? Is it like a? I'm mean, not now, obviously, but you know, in normal circumstances, was I was like getting up a few week? times a week there, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I, getting I, up there three to four nights a week. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure I've seen you in the late night sets sometimes because I used to be in LA all the time, and I would spend half my time at the store at shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, the, once you get past, you know, that 12 o'clock hour and you, you know, and you know, a lot of those people are tourists, obviously they're coming in from all over the friggin' place. And, you know, I don't envy you guys going up late. You know, it's, it's definitely a wild, <laughs> you know, crap shoot oh, yeah. as to what you're going to get. You I've know? had to, I mean, that's what really another thing that helped me with my training is like, I would have sometimes a set list where I was like, I'm going to hit every single one of these jokes tonight. And then as soon as you hit the stage, you're like, I'm getting to none of these jokes. Yeah, right. This is not happening. This room is in shambles right now. I got to try. I take it upon myself a lot of times to try to repair the room and fix it for the next couple comics that are coming on after me. Right. If, if there are even sometimes I'm bringing up Don Barris, the last guy of the night. Yeah. So, you know, you do what you can. It, it, 
I feel like the earlier you are in the lineup, the more duty you have to the rest of the lineup to bring it and make sure you're not phoning it in. So right. those late nights sets where it's real late night, you can experiment, you can be a little bit more avant-garde and like do a little bit. When you start to creep a little bit earlier in the lineup, it's more of a duty to, to make sure the room is good so people stay for the comic after you. Right. Yeah. That, 100% for sure because I've, I've you know, it's, it's a weird – it's a weird element, not element, but, you know, as a, as an audience member, it's, you know, especially I would go first, I would go for the show. I'd go from the start until as long as I could last. And you never want to be that guy to walk out on someone. At least I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like that's awkward. Most people probably just flat out don't care. They'll walk up in the middle of your set and be like, all right, let's get the hell out of here. You know? <laughs> um, and I, I, I've told the story a hundred million times. Nick knows where I'm probably going, but this is, literally right last February, right before Brody passed, he was closing out the night. I had to pee so bad that I'm like, I, I am going to either pee here, like on the side of the stage, or I have to go to the bathroom. And Brody had been on for a solid half an hour already. And I'm like, okay, he's not getting off anytime soon. I have to go pee. I didn't get one foot out of my chair before he was already into me. Right. For, <laughs> for getting up. You don't walk out on me. <laughs> Basically, oh, that's exactly what happened. Are you going to go to the bathroom <laughs> right here, right now? <laughs> and you I don't do that. Yeah, he really let me have it. And then it, I, had, I came back, and I have the bladder of, like, a baby. So it happened again. And I wasn't, I wasn't like, drinking. I, don't, I really don't even drink. And I had to go again, and it, he's now been on for an hour. And I'm like, I got to go. So I got up again. And he let me have it again, like relentlessly, like tortured. And I'm like, I can't come back to my seat after this. Like I literally sat in the back of the room. I waited till he was done. <laughs> and then I got up and we left. It was, it, but it was awesome. And obviously very sad and tragic, but I just, I can't imagine what that's like, you know, having to close out those nights, you know, at what one thirty or, you know, before Barris goes on or Holtzman or someone. So that's, that's pretty, ta that's a lot of talent and courage. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see Nick do it. God, just me. Like how many people like talking to two people, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Wow. It's never, it's never really like the few times I've stayed until the very end. It's, it's never down to a couple people, like certainly handfuls of people, but have what, you really what, ever played to like, what year, what years did you go? Oh no, this is just in the, within the last few years. I'm not talking about like 10 years ago. Where, or even five years ago. Last last few years has been a, a renaissance at the store. Oh, for sure. So it's 100%. been hotter than. Yep. So there's many nights that I've done, two people, one person, really? just in the, the comics in the in back the last of the room. Years? Oh, I've heard that. Just the comics. Sure. Yeah. In the last few, few years. years ago. Like oh yeah. Four years ago. Three, oh yeah. Four, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah, Definitely. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That. That. I don't know. Is that cool? Like, what's that like if you're just playing to the comics at one o'clock in the morning? Uh, it's a different, um, it's a different battle because you are, um, you can't really just do your jokes because they're wanting something else from you. They're wanting to see like, wh what's inside you? Like, what, what, are, what are you made of? It's really a lot of that. It's that yeah. question of kind of like, what are you made of when there's no audience? Right. When it's, when it's just you in a dark room with comics judging you in the back, yep. how do you react? It's a lot of that, which yeah. builds up your strength for later sure. sets down Absolutely. the road. But if you make the comedians laugh in an empty room, in an empty pitch black room, in the middle of the night, you're on to something. Yeah. You know? For sure. If, that, if, you're, if you're showing off something inside you that like, oh, this gets a reaction like that's I've made a lot of self-discovery with like little nuances of what people I think like to see from me as a performer right. in those settings where it's like, oh, this is working when nobody like literally when nobody's here, yeah. this is working. This is what like there's a handful of bits that I will only do when a comic will call it out like, hey, do this bit. Cause I can't do that in the middle of a sh some of these bits I can't do in the middle of a show when it's like a sold out show. It's not really fair to the other comics 
behind me that would have to clean up my mess, like me do my 15 and be like, all right, see you guys later. But late night, you can do that because there's hardly anybody there. So you can take these more crazy risks. And I'll do the bits someday, hopefully on, on a special or something that are way weirder and out there when it's my audience, but I can't do that when I'm worrying about other people on the lineup, sure. you know? Sure. Dude. So what's next for you, man? Cause I know the, it's like, we don't know what's going to happen with this fucking virus or things we get shut down again. So what's like, what are you focusing on as of now coming up next? Yeah. Uh, just been focusing on my podcast, Jeremiah wonders. Um, you know, I still get to do that remotely, uh, with people out of town and then people are still doing, I'm still doing it with people in person when they're comfortable to do yeah. that. And, uh, I've been doing, um, I think I'm going to be doing a lot more voiceover stuff, uh, this next year. I, um, I'm working with some new people that I'm excited about and they're excited about me. And, uh, I've already booked, uh, some stuff that will start coming out in, um, 2021 and stuff like that and uh just more podcasts and more sketches and stuff like that i'm just gonna be trying to put out more stuff like that on my youtube and different things like that and uh hope that that will go in a, a positive direction just so make where, silly stuff so where where can people find your special uh they can order it on amazon prime it's on video on demand it's on apple tv uh, you can even purchase it like on a couple of random platforms if you're in a different country, uh, like Vimeo, or even like you can, I think you can purchase it even on YouTube if you really want to. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to do it. I've been telling people mainly Prime, uh, just because that's an easy rental that you can sure. do on there. Uh, and then the album is out as well if you want to uh, check that out. Um, that's coming out on all platforms, uh, later in the week on December 11th. So December 8th, the special drops, and then the audio drops on December 11th. The same what is that thing you just held up? This is a CD, a compact disc. Uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm a Phil Collins fan, <laughs> so I still believe in hard copy CDs and, uh, I will have some vinyl for sale, a limited, some limited edition vinyls. Uh, once the special comes out that people can get from my website, jeremiahwatkins.com. That's awesome. I'll just bust in your job. Send you to West Force. Um, I know. All right. Know. All right, man. Really appreciate the time. Um, really enjoyed your special. Good luck with it. Uh, Amazon Prime and everywhere else you can purchase it, not anything else. Um, and obviously, we'll be keeping an eye and ear out for you, sir. Heck yeah. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank you. Dude, very much. No, appreciate you, man. This is awesome. Yeah, have, a good, uh, have a good rest of 2020. God bless. Stay healthy. <laughs> God bless you guys. <laughs> oh, Jack. See you later. Have an awesome day. <laughs> well, dude, what an ending. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>